This is the Podcraft Beer Show, episode 29, for Monday, February 1st, 2021. Today we examine a wild ale, a pilsner, an imperial stout, and a quintuple IPA. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Podcraft Beer Show for Monday, February 1st, 2021. This is episode 29. The goal of this show is to examine the best craft beer from Southern California and beyond. This is Tech Guy Steve with today's introduction for host Chris and Charlie. For today's show, we are back in person with our normal recording gear, socially distanced over at Charlie's house. We are going to be sharing with you our thoughts on four very different beer styles, an American Wild Ale, an Italian Pilsner, an Imperial Stout with adjuncts, and then a Quintuple IPA. If you'd like to subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast player app, then head over to thepodcraft.com and look for the subscribe links. You can also get all the links mentioned in this podcast, pictures of all the beers, and other good information at thepodcraft.com. This is the Podcraft Beer Show. I'm your host, Chris. Got your other host, Charlie. Yo! We got tech guy Steve. Hello. Back together again. Here we are with uh getting the band back. <laughs> got a couple of beers uh from uh from around the way to uh to pop together. We have a a little uh we got a sour, uh a pilsner, and then uh, we're gonna finish up with a stout. It's gonna be good. So uh what's the first beer you got there, Charlie? This is Shrine of Forsaken God Part Two. All right, so the Shrine of the Forsaken God, that was a collaboration, Modern Times and uh, and Jester King. That bottle came out um 2018. It was a, uh, um, it says they pitched both breweries' respective house cultures in an open fermentation vessel before racking the beer in red wine barrels. Uh, and then they dosed it with raspberries. Funky funk. So it pours like a... I Tangerine a, color. Yeah, like a kind of a rose... It smells Ooh, awesome. It does. It smells. <laughs> it smells really, really sour. There, I'm excited to do that. This is going to be interesting. Ooh, oh, that hasn't that hasn't broken down a bit. No, that's um, ooh, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> so it's, it it still has was, all the all the raspberry that I can that I that I remember. The acidity, <laughs> I think it's a little more acidic than it was uh, than it was before, but it's not overwhelming. Yeah, but I like looking over at Steve and just give him just give him the look, and he goes, "Yeah, it's pretty good." Yeah. <laughs> I would pretty. have never drank this before. Yeah, remember, yeah, that's remember the guy who doesn't like stouts or sours. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's bringing stouts to the party now. That's great. <laughs> yeah, that's a um, that's a phenomenal beer. It's been a uh, been a long time since I've had that that bottle. I mean, Chester King in modern times. Come on, man. Did you, you say, say did you say when you got it? I, I uh, it's that. 2018. Um, gosh, I want to say early in that. Um, let's see. I got two more of these. Yeah, it's um, it's been a long time since. Um, it's, it's well worth the wait, though. Good night. This is delicious. Just that nose is just wicked. Yeah, that's um, that's a tasty beer. Yeah, I ran out of these uh, a while ago, and then uh, yeah, we found this before your trip to uh, back east. Yeah, trip out of town. Hey, so did you guys have any uh, any decent beers this week? I did. I always have decent beers. Okay. I just pregame with uh, Valhalla from Triple Crossing. So you remember Conrad went out to Colorado and came back. So he picked up two beers. We had, we had one from Moab brewery yep. before, so that he gave us two two cans. The other one was FMU. Double IPA, very very good. Christine and I both liked it. From uh, from Moab. From Moab Brewery, it's got a cool little space guy. Oh yeah, uh, was it pretty good, Steve? Yeah, it was good. Yeah, it was well, definitely. And it, and I think this is like one of their main beers that they have all the time in cans in the that area. Okay, I had a uh, Kern River Brewing, the uh, Isabella Blonde. Oh, that sounds good. Uh, yeah, it was. That's I think that's one of their best beers, other than the Citra that they put out. Which is super good, but personal opinion there. But uh, then I had a Beer Zombie and Mason Ale Works, uh, Hazy that they put out together, collab. And then the last one was uh, Safety Squints, uh, Hazy from uh, Moxa. Ooh, how was that? It was delicious. 
love the can graphics too. See yeah, how it's, it's really, the it's eyeballs, eyeballs squints squint. there. Yeah. Kind of cool. How are, you, how are you getting your moxa beers? Are these the ones you guys bought when you were up there? Or you, uh, uh, I think this might have came in a uh, little gift bag from Chris over here or something, but uh, I just found it out there sitting cold in my refrigerator. There's actually, we got to, uh, I got to get to, um, uh, to to pick those beers up from uh, from Ryan's daughter here, pretty quick. Maybe the, maybe the Sunday, uh, I got to reach out to him. Um, I had a quite a bit of uh, um, quite a bit of um, humble sea. I've been uh, I've been hitting quite a bit of humble sea recently. Um, had some. Let's see what was the the best beer that I had. Oh, you know what? Night will fall. Um, an urban uh, from Urban Roots. It's a brewery and uh, yeah. uh, brewery, and I believe it's a. Um, a, sm- a smokehouse, like a uh, barbecue spot in um, in the greater S- uh, Sacramento area. It was really good. Um, it's a double, uh, it's a nice, nice stout. It was, um, Stouts was are awesome. good. Yeah. Well, uh, talking about this, uh, those beers and these beers, we had, uh, uh, earlier you sent me a picture of that uh, five liter from uh, Green Cheek. Yep. Got it. Did you? Did yeah. uh, Aaron pick it up? A.A. Ron is on it. So coming soon to a backyard near you, there'll be five liters of that delicious beverage on cask, which is interesting that they put it in there. Yeah, they uh, they they did these. Um, Green Cheek did some. Uh, what did they say? It was a it was a collaboration with Track Brewing Company. It was a Manchester style hoppy cask pale ale with strata hops. Then they sold it in in six pa- or four packs of sixteen ounce cans, as well as a a five liter mini cask. Like looks like those. Uh, Oh yeah, like that guy there, yeah, like the Heineken, <laughs> right? Yeah, like the Heineken looking keg. So the um, that should be uh, interesting. I'm ready. So coming soon, but uh, yeah, we we uh, got a couple of decent beers lined up here. Other than this one here, this one is outstanding. Yeah, that was a Jester was... King and Modern Times. Yeah, I'm a I'm a fan. The it was you know, and uh, today I just saw Jester King posted their um. The uh, pictures uh, going back to their ten year anniversary. Ten year their, anniversary. Yeah, ten years ago at when the they opening, op- first opening. Uh, yeah, yeah. There was hundreds of people at their farm there. Oh, None of them wearing masks. Thousands. Yeah, there was, no, there was thousands. There was a lot, there. a lot of people in there. Yeah. Right? You've been to that place. It's yeah, huge, it's huge. Well, I was just telling Jen. I said, "Oh, look!" I said, "Jester King's having a giant reopening," and then I looked down. and I, I didn't tell her, but it was it was from ten years ago. All right. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, I was like, "Look at all those people with no wow, masks. No masks. We're looking that, so comfortable." Texas. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. no, they they yeah that was a that must have been one heck of a party. That was before they even had the pizza up and going and stuff. So they weren't feeding too many people unless it was on trucks or something. Texas style barbecue. Oof. Hey, so uh, big big beer week at. Uh, I ended up picking up some. Uh, it was Pliny the Elder, uh, Pliny the Younger, the released younger, this week, yeah. which was was all online. You know, and and we had talked about that previously. How it was um, there was going to be six thousand cases, um, and you know, I, I was thinking, I'm like, how difficult is that going to be to get six thousand? You know, like where and it's only shipped only to the state of California. Um, so I had I had a bunch of coworkers getting on. One of my coworkers uh, got one. Uh, I got one, and then my um, a guy in Minnesota and that I know ended up getting one. I had him shipped to my house. But there was a lot of people that were pretty fired up talking about the old attack of the the bots. You know, like anytime anybody doesn't get a beer, right? Yeah. They, yeah. they said there was a hundred and ten thousand people that hit their website trying to purchase beer mm-hmm. for the six thousand cases and didn't crash it. Didn't crash it. Yeah. Yeah. That's which pretty uh, impressive. as far as you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah they, they, they came out and they said, because there, there was a lot of people super fired up that were, you know, I didn't get it. it was, did anybody get it, right? It was like, you know, mm-hmm. all the bots got this. Well, it, all that beer that was bought from Wisconsin was shifted to another. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, um, yeah, they uh, a lot of people were pretty fired up, but they, uh, but I, I landed a little well, bit. Well, I said, that's what I said. I was on the golf course. I should have built a bot. Mm, should have. Should have built a bot. Had old. What's what's his name? Pascal? What's it? Pascal. What's his name? Giuseppe. Giuseppe. <laughs> it's a Fug- Fugats. <laughs> We're terrible. We laugh about stuff. We talk inside stories. I'm sorry. Um Are we ready for the next? No, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Um so I'm super excited to get that. We'll we'll try um we'll try that and we'll try uh we'll we'll do a triple IPA show or something. That yeah. the uh, yeah you know what the one fifty or one thirty from uh, one twenty yeah one twenty from uh, which is like fifteen percent yeah 
and that is really hard to drink. Dogfish head, that's mm-hmm. what it is. And then what's another one that's up there like that? That Quinn? Yeah, have you? Did you drink a, a bottle? I of haven't tried it. Yet. I haven't either. So their um, Peer Project did their quintuple IPA. Mm-hmm. Yeah, their Quinn IPA. Uh, I haven't. I haven't drank one of them. I'm afraid to. You know, you look at IPA. If it's if it's got any haze to it, guess what? It's going to go down real. It's probably smooth. super good. That's what. Uh, um, I should have brought one of those. The um, I have one. Huh? Maybe we'll pop it after we pop it. Maybe we'll pop it. Um, I yeah, it'd be worth a, a little try. But a, a 15% IPA is scary. Yeah, I mean that's a one nighter. You know, you can't right. have much more than that. Right. Yeah. This year yeah. is Paisley Pilsner. So Paisley Pilsner, a uh, uh, a Pilsner from from Humble C. Let's... Smells awfully good. I've just been super impressed with uh, with the beers that that these guys have been putting out. Um, <sighs> Haven't had a bad one yet. Although you know what, they did do something earlier. I can't remember what it was. It was along this line, but it wasn't this. It was something else that you weren't a big fan of. No, I just couldn't couldn't get it there. You know. Yeah. So they um so they've been lagering this pilsner for the exact amount of days that Paisley, who's uh, the the co founder Nick's uh, six uh, six week old daughter. Uh, so they they lagered this uh, for for six weeks, and uh, uh, dry hopped it with noble hops. I'm sure it's delicious. You can so smell the hops. Yeah. The- yeah. No, it's it's certainly hoppy, and the um. It's I mean, got it's like, a, like a straw a, color. Just got a smile on your face. Italian yeah. Pilsner. I'm a fan of that. Oh wow, that is. I'm not liking the back end. So. You don't like it. That's what I really no, like. I like, I like the hoppiness yeah, of I it. Do. Like it's you know the, it is certainly yeah, hoppy there on is that hoppy, backside. But but for such a light beer. Right. Oh yeah. No. There's a lot of flavor in that um in that that super light beer. Yeah. You know it's good. It's a lager. I mean, I'll drink a lager any day of the week. I'm just I'm I like to be crisper and mm-hmm. and let and that a clean crispness, finish. Yeah, just finish me off in the back there. That's a little too a uh, little too hoppy for you, Charlie. I don't know. It's a hop. It's just like it's almost like perfumey <laughs> taste. You know, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to explain. Big fan it. of perfume. I like perfume, but they're, they're making these cans harder and harder to read. Not only is it like yeah a light a light green and then white lettering. It's like. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, like a seafoam green. Yeah. yeah, it's it's definitely a good taste up front. I just don't like the back end of it. That's just me. But like I said, I'm a lager and a Kolsch guy, and Pilsner lagers, Feist. You know any of that? If you can make a good beer of that, I mean it's good. Don't get me wrong. Gosh, like I said, I haven't tasted too many things that are. Maybe this was the one I tasted earlier that you weren't a big fan of. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. You know, you get some floral notes in there, but I you certainly taste that's the, what the hoppiness on floral. the back. Floral. Yeah, that's what it is. It's got a little, um, a lot more, a lot more bite than than you normally get in a pilsner for sure. Maybe it's grown on me. That, that yeah. I just finished the the hazy. Maybe that's why it was real sharp. I don't know. So I've been. Um, they, 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 they the they have the Kooks Club. Right up there, and and mainly the the driver behind getting in that was I'd never been able to get any of their barrel aged beers, mm-hmm. and the um their super pop right, which is their their fruited sour, sells out in seconds. So the um they've been uh, they've been releasing you know quite a bit of uh, their super pops. They've been they put them in every month in their super box with a with a uh, a bottled sour uh, or a bottled uh, stout, <clears throat> but they um they send these beers so quick. So the um, <laughs> like the the super pop, I Steve, I have a couple of those for you. But the um, it went on sale on Thursday, um, so it just went up for sale this last Thursday. Uh, I got it last Friday. It it came in the mail, so they put it up for for sale for us on Thursday. And then yeah, I think it, I think I picked it. I ordered it on Thursday. It showed up at my door Friday. Wow, which is pretty quick, yeah. right? And then yeah, it went went on sale for for everybody else then mm-hmm. this week. And so it's they're phenomenal. They're they're super tasty. They make great beers. I mean, they do. They're they're actually expanding. They're they're uh, opening three new tap rooms. Um, one in the South Bay, then one in San Jose, which I'm excited about. A little they further south, trips. yeah. And then um, somewhere else around around that area. They were talking cool. about San Diego. I guess oh, was in I the wish. Wow. was in the works. I'll be the first one in line. Yeah, yeah. it'd be uh, the McKellar model. Sounds like a good plan. <laughs> yeah. The um. Yeah, they're uh um. I think who else is kind of going up in uh, 
like the um, more more modern dimes, I think, you know, where they have different. I don't know if their their plan was to do just tasting rooms, um, like satellite tasting rooms, or if like modern times has breweries at each one of their breweries uh, and restaurants and restaurants. Yeah, yeah, right. They're feeding you and giving you beers. By the way, you pick up beers that they only brew there too. You can't get some of them that are down here because they don't brew them here and they don't ship them down here. So interesting. I mean, I like the thought. You know, maybe, you know, when things settle down a little bit, people will be traveling more and that'll be a big thing. I don't know. I guess I would like to do it. I'd do it anyways. <laughs> Doesn't matter to me, but yeah, it's humble. See, big fan. I, I'm a fan as well. I, I, uh, I, I'm their, I'm their biggest hazy fan. I mean, literally every one they make is rock solid. For sure. Yeah. Those, those foggies, they, the foggy IPAs they make. Yeah, no, those are uh, they're phenomenal. I, I'm a big fan of their of their uh, their stouts as well. Yeah. Ooh, gosh, especially that wave. Yeah, the pastry wave was phenomenal. Whew. That was delish. But now, what is it? What's that? Uh, the Kooks one that they're you said they swapped oh, so out? they so they uh, these and these guys they're um, they treat their their club members phenomenally well, right? Like a lot of a lot of places are you know you can get um like a bottle or two of they 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 had this um banana coconut nar nar which was a, a collaboration they did i believe with jay Wakefield. which rhymes with dar dar <laughs> the um so they they came out and there they said you could buy as many bottles of this as you wanted uh, as a member before they put it on the public sale they had to have like x amount of them say a hundred for the super box which it was going to be the stout and the super box with only super pops a triple ipa and then whatever a double ipa um, but they they let everybody buy as many as you wanted and then they sent out an email last night that was like hey um, we accidentally <laughs> oversold these uh these stouts. Like they didn't expect it to completely sell out to, uh to 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 club members. So they they offered to allow you to trade a one for one, um for those bottles, uh the co- banana coconut narnar for the Kooks Club bottle one, which is the 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 member only bottle that's coming out here in the next couple of weeks. So you could do that with as many of them as you wanted. Um, so I was able to. To swap a couple of those out. Nicely done. Yeah. So the uh, like a, I think it's a, a barrel aged stout with vanilla, bourbon barrel aged stout with vanilla. So it's probably we'll, uh, crappy. Nobody should get it. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see. We'll see. And that's a bottle they don't ever they don't ever get rid of. You know they don't <laughs> ever. Tea it with vanilla. It's gonna be awesome. Yeah, you get two. I think you get two with with the membership, and and then they gave you the option to get as many um as you wanted on the one for one. Well, it just tells you where they stepped up a notch. You know, in their stout. In their in their barrel age and their stout stuff. I mean, because we had the pastry wave, and that's I think that's what set it off. That's when we were yeah we we had bought a couple of bottles of that and we're like, this is phenomenal. And then yeah, well we went back and right yeah that was the first stout that I had had of theirs that I you know I was like this is uh well no it wasn't that uh, cocoa and nibs or whatever the collab they yeah that's the first thing but I mean when you know hey. You come out with a great stout, and guess what? If you bottle something, and it's, I mean, I think they went, because you can get a crowler of that cocoa and nibs. No, cashew and cashew nibs. Cashew and nibs is what That's it is. That's what it is. Sorry, Steve. The other Steve, my buddy, will uh, correct me every time I say that cocoa and nibs. He goes, no, it's cashew. You said it wrong on the show. <laughs> I'm like, I apologize. I'll straighten it out at some point. But, uh, yeah, it's, whew, man, I had one of those, and I was like, Oh my gosh, this is really, really good. So when he was up there and I said, uh, he says, what, what should I get? I said, well, you can get whatever you want. I said, just get me two crowlers for that, um, cashew and nibs. And, uh, I highly suggest you get one of those at least. And he goes, okay, I will. So he got him. And now he's like, every time he goes up there, he just comes home with crowlers of cashew and nibs. So good deal. Hmm. And that's when, after we had that and we found out how good that was, we knew that that pastry wave was going to be pretty legit, mm-hmm. especially being in a bottle, you know. Right. If they're bottling that and they were crowler in the other one, it's going to be a notch up. And it was. Yeah, I think, yeah, it was one. phenomenal. It was the the second rendition. This one was, uh, it was it was Moxa, um, Mostra, and Humble Sea. I think the previous one was, was, was uh, Moxa, Humble Sea, and a different coffee company. But this one was, uh, was Mostra. Yeah. It was it was phenomenal. I'm expecting my Mostra package any day now. Yeah, they were handing them out. I, I was up there last week at, at Mostra. Me and Megan were. We dropped in and um, 
They're having some special releases this week too. Are they? They got a yeah. It's their anniversary week going on, so they had some some pretty wild coffee drinks that were yeah. Well, they had their phenomenal. original one that they uh, they got for roaster of the uh, year that they remade. It wasn't exact same beans, but it was the same style and everything, and they roasted it the same way. And so it's a different year, but it's still excellent. You can get that mm-hmm. right now. You can get that online. So. Big fan, yeah. No, their their coffee is great. I um I actually picked that that um the two seven ounce container thing up a couple weeks ago last week. It's great, great coffee. My pour over game uh, <laughs> up cranked it up a notch. It did, it did. I've been drinking, you know. So a couple uh, not that long ago, um maybe I don't know, maybe a month ago, uh, Modern Times did five pound bags of their coffee. Yeah, um, for for pretty cheap. Um, on the per pound mm-hmm. basis, so that's what I've been drinking. That, mm-hmm. that like turned into my daily my daily drinker. And I realized like how much coffee I drink because I'm like, <laughs> man, that wasn't that long ago. And there's like five pounds of coffee that are gone. Mm-hmm. Bent through it. Yeah, I, we blew through it pretty quick. I had one of their um, can uh, coffees. Their cold brew. Yeah, cold brew. Yeah, yeah. Black really, really is that what it is? I can't remember which one. Is, it was no. like their base model one, but no, it was sorry. really good just because I, I needed some, a little, a little bit of caffeine and I, uh-huh. I was at the store and it was- Black like, House Coffee. That's Yeah, what Black House, yep. Yeah. I was thinking of two different ones. Yeah. Yeah, they do a bunch of different uh, but bunch of different things. Um, different, like they'll do bourbon barrel aged, uh, mm. which is phenomenal. Some of those things are like five bucks a can. Yeah, the bourbon barrel aged ones wow. are- I like to bring those on hikes with me, like when we do like a, mm-hmm. um, like a bigger mountain, me and Megan- Cows. Pop a little, exactly. <laughs> Pop a little, uh, like Mount Baldy or yeah. something, you know, the, uh, um, throw a little can down at the top. I like it. Yep. So, uh, speaking of that, uh, that Mostro, what, uh, what else you got over there? I got a little co collab between, uh, Virgin and Moxa. And this is a, Stout, I can't, Imperial Stout aged in for 12 months in Buffalo Trace bourbon barrels and conditioned on raw coconut, toasted coconut, vanilla beans, and cacao nibs. So we're going to roll on to this one. Yeah, no, so they they say they aged this. uh, This is Depth Variant 1, which was a virgin. It was their anniversary beer. Yep. Right? They, uh, um, Steve brought this bottle for us. Uh, so, is that what anniversary was that, Steve? Their second. Was it? I think maybe third. I can't remember. Sorry. And they, um, so they aged this barrel twelve months in Buffalo Trace bourbon barrels. Uh, yeah, like Charlie said, with uh, I can smell trace of barrel in there. Little coconut, little vanilla bean. Oh gosh, man! I get all really, excited really when good. I smell these things. If it tastes anything like it smells, it's gonna be awesome. Wow, that's really, really good. Lots of coconut. Good kiss of the barrel on there. Man, they did a great job. That's, yeah, that's a very, very good beer. Super tasty. Wow. Any more of those available? That's all I got. No, those they're things. done. That's it. There's only one of them. Kaput. That's all I have. Yeah, they those sold out really quick on their website. They 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 did two variants. They did um, the variant one, which was with coconut, and variant two. Um, I saw that that Bottlecraft had in variant too. Steve, how'd you get this thing? The uh, anniversary dinner. Oh, it was part right. of the dessert piece. Wow, that's a that's a that's a big bottle, man. That's a big one. I mean, not in size, but in taste, man. That is really good. Yeah, this was um, this was the one that I wanted. The other one, um, the other bottle they did was uh, um, Moxa uh, Virgin Mostra. Uh, and then maple syrup. So it was coffee and maple syrup. Um, this one was the uh, the coconut was the one that I, I wanted to taste. So coconut's good. Thank you for that. No, that's a phenomenal beer. Gosh, good job. I mean, that's that's first stout I've tasted from uh, Virgin. Yeah, mine, mine too. So great job, guys. Super fantastico. I'm gonna lots drink of, this. Lots of coconut. In that so guy. when they do a collab like that, do you think the the guys from Sacramento are most came down or moxa came down here 
Or yeah, I think did, I think he probably so did. It's the collaborates the other way, you know, like whoever the collaborator is is the one who visits. What's, who's, what's his name? The the brewer? Derek. Derek, yeah, yeah. The um, super nice guy. Yeah. So the um, you know, it's kind of I was. Uh, um, usually it's you know they they come down and hang out and just um, uh, you know, learn more about the, the other the other people's processes, how they do this or whatever. Spend a spend a day hanging out. Um, humble C kind of loop it back to those guys. They talked about their collabs and how they do like these, these virtual collabs, right? They're like, we still have the people come out, but the the majority of like our, um, of the making the beer, like the last thing you want is Derek showing up from his brewery and trying to turn the knobs at, at Burgeon, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, your own brewery or whatever, right? Like, yeah. um, so they're like the, the majority of their work and like making the recipe and coming up with the ideas, they, they do that over, um, zoom or whatever you know um before and then they hang out go surfing like hang out at the beach when they come out you know they're like (laughs) what if they drink any beer you don't need to be sitting here making the beer you know like we'll make the beer to our recipe but um let's like let's come out hang out and collab and like get to know Mm -hmm. one another right right just pretty cool that's cool i I was reading somewhere on uh somebody's instagram or something and they were talking about how they did a collaboration and they said they wanted to do it um the same beer done whichever brewery you know they do them separately it's they get together and they decide how they want to do it and everything and then they take those and they go to their own brewery and they brew it and then they bring it back together when it's ready to drink and they taste it to see what the goods and bads and differences are and i thought that was super interesting i'd love to do that is taste beers that you know that's kind of like you know white labs when you go up there and you get the different yeast flavors in each one of those so you get a little different taste on every one of them and that's that i think that's interesting but you know i thought it was pretty cool to read that up and uh see how they were talking about it but yeah this this thing is outstanding it's that's it's it. super smooth it's like a, it? a right mix of all of them sometimes we get them in the you know you can really taste one of the things i think yeah. this one's like it's almost like a milkshake like Well, you smell the, you smell the barrel. The the barrel smells really strong. And you like taste the across. coconut, but it, and you taste the cacao nibs. Yeah, I would expect just based on the smell, I'd, I'd expect it to be a lot hotter, like a lot more barrel. And there's really not. It's a really really good, uh, nice little kiss. I like it. And it's not a huge bottle. This is a smaller bottle. This is a twenty, this is in twenty five hundred milliliter. Uh, yeah. So it does have vanilla beans. I'm not getting a whole ton of that. So maybe that was the lightest. Of the uh, adjuncts, but uh, definitely uh, coconut and toasted coconut I can taste and the cacao nibs. Vanilla is not as prominent, but you can just taste a little hint of it. Super interesting. Smells even great out of the bottle. Right out of the empty bottle, it smells good. So, big fan of that. Too bad we can't get any more of it. (laughs) It's tasty stout. We're we're still working on our... uh, record of beers we've yeah we've drank beers that you cannot drink anymore <laughs> yeah allegedly yeah. one of those you can get you know one of the three the pilsner bad. one out of three ain't bad yeah yep. pilsner. pilsner you can get a hold of yeah the uh the jester king modern times that thing that that ship sailed long ago well hey i i got um we got a few minutes out should i get out that uh quinn yeah i mean if you if you want to uh i mean i'll i'll take a little taster as a little bonus so the um so as as Charlie retrieves this this last beer, I'll um I'll mention this real quick. Um, so so Peer Project uh, released a, a quintuple IPA for their fifth anniversary, um, which is what uh, Charlie's gonna grab. So they um so the Shadow of the Moon. It's a murky quintuple IPA with Nelson Strata Mosaic Citra and Cashmere hops. Comes in at fifteen percent. They made it for their um their fifth anniversary. Like that's a you know, I mean, every year you do a, I remember, I think it was their second anniversary. They did a, um, like power and numbers where they did like a, an IPA and, and a stout both that had, you know, 13 collaborators or something. Sure did. That? Yeah. I kind of slightly remember that, but it's been so long. Yeah. It's been quite a while, but the, um, yeah, this be my first run at the old quintuple IPA. 15%. I'd have one little sip. Right, yeah, exactly, exactly. Pours well. That's uh, probably all right. Yeah, no, for sure. Certainly murky. The um gosh, it's got a great oh, off, off the can. Of- <laughs> <laughs> it's, oh my gosh. I mean, it certainly doesn't smell like you doesn't smell boozy, like it just smells like tropical. It smells I don't know. It smells like a 
It smells like an IPA. Just a muted IPA. It's definitely drinkable, that's for sure. Yeah, that is dangerous. Wow. That is not a uh No, you certainly wouldn't think forward. that. You know what that hazy, wow. that murky has just dubbed down that uh alcohol taste. If that's fifteen percent, crazy dangerous. Yeah, no, that's a uh that's that's a pretty smooth um yeah, it's super, super tropical smelling. Um and you get a lot of a lot of hop, like a lot of um I'm letting it I'm letting it uh Breathe a little bit here, and then I'm going to, wow, yeah, super dangerous. Yeah, that's like a double IPA, Easy. you know, the, um, I mean, I've tasted, a little sweet. I've tasted just regular IPAs that have tasted much more boozy than that does for 15%. That's going to be an all day drinker. Yeah, 15% uh, IPA there. Watch out. That is really smooth. <laughs> for sure. For yeah. It. There is no booze in this. No, it's <laughs> like just yeah. No, that's a um, water went down the wrong pipe there. That's a that's a dangerous beer. <clears throat> Good night. So I thank you for for popping that one out. I'm I'm certainly uh, down to three. I haven't wanted to. Um, it's not that I haven't wanted to to pop one of those, but I don't want to like get off work and drink that and be game over. <laughs> you know, it's a possibility. <laughs> the. Um, so yeah, no, thanks for for popping that. I certainly uh certainly if you're going to have another beer, I'd, I I must I guess if you're at home. That's you're a good call. At home, you're at home. I am. You are. So today we uh Excuse me. Kind of ran the gamut. We had uh I'm just choking on water I just drank, believe it or not. So we had that 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 Modern Times Jester King uh Shrine of the Forsaken God, the the sour, phenomenal. It's great. It's a great beer. We had the Paisley Pills from from Humble Sea. A little crispy boy that that was uh, phenomenal. It um, was definitely good. It was. Yeah. Little, I, uh, you know what? It got better as I was drinking it. So got less floral for Charlie as yeah. as it warmed. Yeah, up. if it was your first beer for the day, maybe that might help with the palate. Part. Yeah, that could be too, right? You know, we uh, could have fired that that guy off to begin with. The um, we had the depth variant one uh, from from Burgeon and and uh, Moxa. Moxa, it's great. Burgeon. Lot of a uh, lot of a lot of um. Coconut Super in there. good stout, really good uh, barrel taste, and finished her off with Shadow of the Moon, the uh, Piers uh, Pure Projects. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, con- surpri- the surprise pure. beer. The surprise. Why, why should beer. Steve not be surprised? Yeah, yeah. never be surprised. <laughs> exactly. Don't be shocked. Well, I uh, that was a, that was a pleasant surprise, Charlie. Those On that decent, note, huh? I think we'll uh, see these guys next week, huh? Cheers! 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 So to summarize, today's show had four craft beers. First was The Shrine of the Forsaken Gods, Part 2, a barrel-aged American wild ale from modern times based here in San Diego, in collaboration with Jester King Brewery based out of Austin, Texas. The second was Paisley Pills, an Italian pilsner from Humble Sea, which is based out of Santa Cruz, California. The third was Depth Variant 1, an imperial stout aged for 12 months in Buffalo Trace bourbon barrels and conditioned on raw coconut, toasted coconut, vanilla beans, and cacao nibs from Bergen Beer Company based out of Carlsbad, California, in collaboration with Moxka Brewing out of Rockland, California. And our final beer was The Shadow of the Moon, a murky quintuple Indian pale ale from San Diego's Pure Project Brewing. The links for everything mentioned in today's podcast is over in the show notes at thepodcraft.com. The site also has links to send us email feedback, check out the photos of the beers we drank, connect with us on social media, and subscribe to the show via your favorite podcast app. In closing, please continue to recommend the PodCraft Beer Show to your craft beer friends and family members in your life. The more, the merrier. Thank you so much for sharing your time and attention with us. For Chris and Charlie, this is Tech Guy Steve signing off for this week's The PodCraft Beer Show. Have a great rest of your day. Podcraft Show is licensed under Creative Commons Attribution, Share Alike 4.0 International. All rights reserved 2020 through 2021. The show is produced by Aztecmedia.net. If you have questions, then please email thepodcraftpodcast at gmail.com. Fair use notice. Reference material and media have been placed within this medium for informational, educational, and discussion purposes only. 
in compliance with fair use criteria established in Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. It should also be noted that the opinions expressed on this podcast are those of the participants and are not endorsed by the participants' previous, current, or future employers or advertisers. You still here? It's over. Go home. Go. Oh, oh.